Jobs, which is not good. It's better to make up your mind. Okay. All right. <laughs> Silence our cell phones. <laughs> okay, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting to order for uh, September 14th, 2023, Zoning Board of Appeals. Microphone. It's on. Is it not hearing out there? I'm uh, hello, testing, testing. Speaker's not on in the room. How about this one? This one better? All right, the speaker. Oh, there we go. Hey, there we go. Now we have the speakers on the room. Okay. Thank you for letting me know that you can hear me. All right. Uh, the board does not write the zoning ordinance, but does have the authority to grant relief from where practical difficulty or unnecessary hardship would result. The board will vote on each agenda item following a public hearing. Use variance requests require a minimum of six affirmative votes in order to grant the requested variances. Non-use variances request a, require a minimum of five affirmative votes in order to grant the variances. If you would like to request the board table or during your case due to the absence of a full board, which tonight we have eight board members, we're down one, you must inform the chairperson immediately after the public hearing. Petitioners shall do their best to limit presentations to 10 minutes. Each participant in a public hearing shall do their best to limit comments to three minutes. All right, as you can see, we're down one board member. Uh, minutes for August 10th, 2023. Is there any amendments to the minutes? Seeing none, then the amendments are as approved as they have came before us. Uh, unfinished business, case number 23-07-14. Uh, 3041 Sylvan Drive. Is the petitioner present? Mr. Chairman. Excuse me. I, I request that you reopen the public hearing. This is a third time. Sorry, time. sir, right now this is not time. Okay. Of, excuse me, sir. It's. Let me bring for our thing. We've already had public hearing twice. No, Let, we had public hearing once. <laughs> okay, hold on. Please. Please sit down. Thank you. Okay. Petitioner is present. Knowing that the board is not full, do you and you've delayed it twice already? Do you still wish to delay again, or do you? No, I, we'd like to go forward. All right. You've presented this case twice now. I don't know if there's anything new you have to present. If there's not, then I would. Is there anything new to present or no? Yes, I'd like to speak. New to present, not. Right. In addition to any comments or anything else like that. Right. Um, I don't know if anyone needs a copy who wasn't here before of the sketch from DNR Architects or not. Um, does anyone need a copy of that? No? Okay. Um, so this is not new. Uh, I just calculated under the City of Royal Oak Municipal Code the floor area. Um, there were some complaints of generally that it was too small. Um, in order for it to be two family from a single family, if there's no two family, and this is under section 77022 A and B, um, if there's no two family unit adjacent to the home, then the, it, it has to be at least 80% of the square footage of all adjacent homes. Um, so 3035 Sylvan, which is next to 3041, has 1,400 square feet. 3045 Sylvan, which is next to 3041 Sylvan, has 1,131 square feet. 3042 Sylvan, which is across from 3041, has 1,400 feet. Excuse me, please be quiet. Let her do her speaking. You're not, it's not time to speak anything, please. This is based on public record. Um, the house that is behind 3041 Sylvan, which is 708 Butternut, has 1,134 square feet. The adjacent home that has the lowest square footage, which is what it has to be based off of, is 3045. 
that has 1,131 square feet. 80% of that means each living space has to have 904.8 square feet. Um, if you reference the sketch from DRN Architects, um, the square footage is placed next to the first, and this plan is, a, is an, in anticipation of necessary updates. The first floor and the basement are listed as having the same square footage. The first floor is 1,135 square feet. Uh, based on the sketch and square footage generally in a home does not include the basement. Um, Based on the sketch and the way that it's written here, it appears that the basement is the same square footage. The basement is substantially similar. Um, it looks like there might be some necessary, um, you know, in enforced walling on the outside of the basement, but it's substantially the same size. Um, so based on the ordinance itself, uh, this property would be viable for two family, for a two family dwelling. Okay. I believe everything else I've said. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now, we previously have had a public hearing. Now, I don't know if there needs to be more spoken because we understand how the crowd feels. Um, I don't know if anyone else from the board would like to hear public, additional public comments of already having the public hearing and previously. If do so, please make a motion. At the end of our agenda, there's typically a spot for general public comments. Um, if they have new things to say, when would they say them if they don't say them now? That's fine. So That's why I'm giving you guys the option to move to open the public comment. Back open. If you look. Okay. Um, does anyone, yes, Mr. Or, or is there one speaker that can speak on behalf of the group, or or is there a limited number of speakers that have new evidence or new 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 items to share? Yeah. 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 On August 11th. You can come before, because we're just trying to limit it to new items. We know how everyone feels. We understand. Yeah. Um, so we'll open up this public comment to allow the new comments to be said. So, okay. go on. So, on August 11th, uh, we had hand delivered to the Royal Oak City Hall a letter with signatures of people in the neighborhood. Did you receive a copy of that? It's in our packet. Okay. Because that was a result of not being able to speak at the last meeting. So there's a number of people present tonight that would like an opportunity to speak. Okay. Just Nobody had acknowledged this. That's why I was wondering if anybody received it. No, we, okay. uh, we received it. Uh, Thank acknowledging you. it. Yes, Ms. Ray. Oh, I was... You had a question? No, I was just going to say that it is okay. on the, it's attached to the agenda. Yes. So. Okay, thank yeah. you. If you have new comments, you can come up. We just we're just trying to limit to to new comments that haven't been said already just because there's so many of you and we understand your feelings. Well, welcome. Thank you. Uh, anyway, for let me speak. But uh, there's something came to light last month where the police were called to the 3041. And evidently, the police department had already made a decision on this, where they said that as long as Nathan Zahar calls the police department, gives the name of the person, they were allowed to spend the night there. So evidently, it's in flagrant violation of everything that you're trying to do here. So evidently, they run you. The police department is like, you know, the daddy, when you're raising a little child, the child goes to the mother, the mother says, no, you can't do this. You run to the daddy, and the daddy says, oh, yeah, we'll let, let this happen. So evidently, the police department now is making all the decisions for you. Well, thank you. Sir, did, if you had, yeah.
Hi there. My name is Kelly. I live in a house on Sylvan also. The same exact layout as this house. It's probably 1,050 square feet of that. There's three bedrooms. The bedroom in the back has a back door that goes out. If someone's in there, that will be shut. There's a front door. Most people use a side door from the driveway. She wants to shut off that off to the kitchen so there's only the one way out that way. What do you do with fire code? There's no fire barrier between two residents. There's one furnace, one air conditioner, one electrical box. How do you do that? You have two separate families. Um, just looking, they're small houses. It should be a single family home. You know, if he bought in this neighborhood and didn't really check it out to see if this could be done, you know, that's his mistake. If you want a duplex, just go downtown and buy one. There's plenty of duplexes down there. Just go do that. Don't come into our neighborhood and start making all our little ranches duplexes and ruining our neighborhood. You're not even from Royal Oak, no nothing. I know everyone wants to make money and invest in Royal Oak and make money off of the renters. Um, there's other houses in the area that are rented out, usually by the year. Wonderful renters, nice families. Why can't you just do this? Instead of chopping up a little house, ruining our house values, I just don't understand as a business person why you wouldn't have checked into this a little further mm -hmm. or just go buy a duplex if that's really what you want. Thank you. You're right. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. You're welcome. The, the reason I ask that you allow people to speak is that there was information introduced by the appellant last time, and we didn't get a chance to, uh, to comment on it. Number one, there was an architectural drawing submitted, and when I looked on the uh, on the website, there was no link, so we don't know what that architectural drawing looks like. Okay. Oh, am Maybe. I wrong? It's in there. It's, it's in the packet. It should well. be in the packet. I don't know if you looked at the. Oh, you can bring it up on okay. the screen right now. My, you, you... my bad. Page, That's okay. Page sixty-two of sixty-five. Okay. <laughs> I didn't realize that the packet had been updated. That's okay. Okay. That's okay. And uh, well, obviously it's it's an improvement over. You've seen the photographs, and it's a mess. I joked the last time I wouldn't put my mother-in-law down there. But anyway, the issue of hardship was also introduced again last time, and the fact that, uh, that it was a single-family uh, home when, when he bought it. The thing is, uh, it was a duplex. Uh, oper uh, it was operated as a duplex when he bought it. You know, I'm a landlord. I have a commercial property, and I don't do squat unless I have my uh, attorney check everything. I once said to my attorney, I don't go to the bathroom without permission from you, and his response is, Bill, you have the, my permission to go to the bathroom. But, but the thing is, he should have realized that this was uh, zoned as a sim single family uh, dwelling if he did his due diligence. So I reject the fact that there is, uh, is no hardship on, on his part. It's just, and you've also seen, it, it, he's an irresponsible landlord. You've, you've read the uh, inspector's report, it's pages after pages uh, that talks about the deplorable condition of the, of the, uh, of the building. And, I did, and beyond that, it's a spot zoning, which is illegal. And it's just bad precedence to put, to change this to a uh, multiple family uh, housing or duplex or whatever in a single family zone that has been this way since it was built. Thank you. All right. Any other new items to present? Yes.
Good evening. Uh, my name is Trish Oliver. I've lived in Royal Oak almost 40 years. Uh, I've been following the master plan and zoning ordinance changes. Everyone in the city should be fearful that if the city commission and mayor have their Excuse way. Excuse me, if this, yep, does, does this have to do with this, this case? Because yep. it sounds like it's dealing with the master plan. It, it does, and it's short. Okay. Uh, have their way. That ranch houses like the one in Sylvan will very easily be converted into apartments, and thousands of these could be created within a year or two inside the city of Royal Oak, with absentee landlords owning these apartments who don't respect or care about the neighbors who live there now. So again, I urge you to vote to support the neighbors and keep the integrity of the neighborhood intact. Thank you for your consideration. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, good evening. My name's Dave Hill. I live on Sylvan, have been there for quite some time. Um, just want to say that Royal Oak, you know, we're blessed to have many different types of housing. There are certainly uh, places in Royal Oak where multi-unit housing is appropriate, but Sylvan Drive is not one of those areas. It's, it's uh, the very reason, I mean, all these uh, dwellings on Sylvan Drive are single family dwellings. It's the very reason why people elected to move there. And, you know, people moved there because they wanted to start um, and raise families. And it's the very foundation, these single dwelling homes are the very foundation of our community. They provide uh, for more stable occupancies and for solid schools, amongst other things. Again, we need the diverse uh, types of housing, but allowing single dwelling homes to be squeezed into multi-family uh, multi units weakens the very foundation that the families desire. The issues that I have, the owner has previously advertised to lease this unit by the month and also allow subleases. Both options are not conducive to stable neighborhoods in which families want to raise families. Again, there are other forms of housing in Royal Oak that address this type of need. The current homeowner does not maintain the property, as we've heard. Until two months ago, the lawn was typically not maintained, and there was trash and other household goods visible from the street for weeks on end. The owner is not truthful in the petition that the dwelling was used as a duplex. He may have leased it to multiple parties at the same time, but the dwelling was not designed for separate living spaces and, it, and was in violation of city codes. The owner is claiming hardship if the property is not used as a duplex. Again, this was self-imposed hardship due to his lack of knowledge. Something I would think he should know since this house is not his first real estate venture. The homeowner does not have regard for the law or the code uh, enforcement as shown yet again when he allowed people to stay in the house this past month. Um, this despite the code enforcement decrees posted on the door and this, despite Royal Oak Police being called to the scene. Just wrapping it up. Um, it's for these reasons that I ask this board to please reject the variances proposed for 3,041 Sylvan. And I thank you for your consideration. Yep. Anyone else for? I just got a quick question. Have you guys ever been down the street? Yes. Okay. Have you seen the house, the condition and all that? Mm -hmm. May I have a rebuttal, especially since I didn't use my full 10 minutes? If we have a question for you, we understand these are comments and whatnot, and you'd like to rebut, but these are comments, and we're taking facts on the side, not just comments. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, any other new comments? I, can you come to the podium, please? It's very, very quick. It's just because my house was brought up by the lawyer as the first house through her statement. I'm on 3035, which is on the east. Uh, I believe she said my house is 1,400 square feet. I did not buy it like this. It was 
1142. And this is in the papers. Okay. Just for the record. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there any other comments? New comments? All right. No. Yeah, my name is John Rash. I live on Sylvan as well. Um, I just don't see where the hardship comes into play. I don't see any hardship for this guy. So uh, I think that's really what requires the zoning variance is the hardship or there's something else there that you just needed. So I just don't see where he's getting the hardship from. So that's my comment. Okay. Any other new comments? Richard Roman, we, we have lived at Sylvan for uh, 40 years, 30, 77, and our house in the natural state is one of the biggest, and it's 1,180 feet on, on the paperwork. So I don't know where they get 1,200 for 1,400 must be additions. That's all. Thank you. Any other comments? <coughs> Going once, twice. All right, we are closing public comments, bringing it back to the side of the board. For any additional questions we may have for the petitioner that need answering, and any motions or discussion. Don't all jump at once. <laughs> I'm not you had your hand up. Um, I'm going to move to deny the petition for the use variance. Just that one, okay. Is there a second? second. Okay, Ms. Robinson. Second, go ahead, Ms. Uke. Okay, I'm voting no against this, not because of who the owner is or who the renters are, because you're still gonna have the same owner and he can still rent this property out. He's got other requirements to comply with. But I'm denying this because it doesn't fit the requirements for a use variance. And as people have said, you have to show a hardship that would result if all the following are met. And the first one is the property could not be reasonably used for purposes permitting in that zone. And we all know it can be used as a single family home because everybody else has a single family home and this has been a single family home up until very, very recently. Uh, B, the appeal results from unique circumstances there's nothing unique about this property. Um, people can have finished basements, but they still can't rent them out as a duplex in an area that's zoned as single family. C, the use requested would not alter the essential character of the area. I think we've heard that it will alter the essential character. We've seen that it will alter the essential character. We've all driven by there. We see that these are small single family homes and there are no duplexes there. Um, D, the alleged hardship has not been created by any person personally having an interest in the property. Um, I believe that it has been created by Mr. Zaher because this was not zoned as a duplex and he didn't check that out first. Um, e, that the use will preserve a substantial property right possessed by other property owners none of you have the right to rent your homes out as a duplex. You all have to come to the zoning board or wait for the master plan to change the zoning. But right now, it's zoned single family and nobody else has that op opportunity. So that's why I'm voting or proposing that we vote no on the use variance. Do you have anything to add? I agree, and you covered that very well. Like the use will preserve, oh, thank you. Um, the substantial uh, right by the people, number E. Um, if it were to happen, we know that it does infringe on the neighborhood if we're trying to change that uh, to, to a multifamily. So I think that E is also not true. Anyone else like to add anything? Mr. Reddy's, thank you. Um, I would just like to add a couple things. I'm, I'm in support of the motion, um, uh, except I don't necessarily agree that item with item D. That uh, no, 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 not D, not D. Um, C, that it would alter the essential character of the neighborhood, having one 
duplex being multifamily, I don't think that would. But I'm going to go along with the motion. But the other thing I wanted to say is only all five of the requirements have to be met. So even if one of them is not met, um, we would not grant this uh, variance. And I just wanted to encourage people to, um, this agenda is available online and all of the attachments are there. And also our requirements are there. So I appreciate all of you coming out to several meetings. Uh, you know, the passion for your neighborhood is admirable. Um, it's just there were a lot of comments uh, related to things that are, are not part of the criteria that's laid out for us that we use to make these decisions. So um, I just encourage you to look at the agenda for items going forward. Not that I'm criticizing. I, I really appreciate all of you for coming out. So thank you. That was all. Any other comments? Mr. Just a clarification, the, the motion is only for A, the use variance, and not the other Right, two? because if we deny the use variance, I believe the other two are moot. No. Any other comments? Well, I, too, will be in support of this motion. The key word is the word all, all five requirements. So even if one can argue for these requirements of the five, just having one of them not be met is enough reason for us to vote on not allowing the use variance to be passed. And concerning, we've all basically stated how well that has worked. And this is not one of those duplexes that have come before us in the past where they've shown decades upon decades of being used as a duplex, even though it was on the books as a duplex. There is no proof that this has had even more than 10 years, let alone two maybe, as a duplex that might have been bought due to just what the previous real estate person said, which I don't know about you, but when I bought my house, I had a one and a half bath supposedly, but really that half bath was nothing more than a shower closet. So just because it says something on the real estate thing doesn't make it true. Uh, but um, it, it, as I said, the key word here is all, and all is not met here. So because of that, I'm in full uh, going with uh, the motion as, uh, as stated. All right. There's, you know, Mr. Murphy. There is a motion on the table for the use of experience A. Correct. It's appropriate to vote on that. I do believe it's appropriate to vote on B and C for a clean legal record. So after no after the vote, this vote on A, I think it's a very appropriate to make a motion related to B and C as well, just for a clean record. All right, thank you, Mr. Murphy. Would it be easier to offer an amendment to do all three? I think there's, there's a motion on the table. It's, it's okay, we can go ahead. Okay. All right, if there's no other discussion, we'll move to a vote. It's Okay. All those in favor of the motion as stated, which is to deny the use variance as requested, signify by saying aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Is there a motion for the other uh, variances to deny? Assuming. Mr. Cushing. I'll make a motion to deny okay. the other two variances. Okay. Is there a second? Mr. Moore. Go ahead, Mr. Clay. Uh, for a reason stated with, with item A. All right. Mr. Moore, anything more to add? All right. Um, think, any discussion on this? No, it's pretty well stated. All right. All those in favor of denying B and C, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries. Thank you very much. And we are moving on to the next case. We will give about a minute or two break to allow you all to disperse since I'm sure you don't want to stick around for the next one, even though we love you guys to stay for your company. <laughs> but, uh, uh, <laughs> sir, sir, <laughs> you're welcome to stay for public comment afterwards if you want to. Thank you. Please uh, exit as fast as you can so that we get the chambers quiet. Thank you. For the next petitioner, they reserve the right to have nice.
someone close those doors back there? Excuse me, sir, can you? Excuse me. Thank you. All right. I think we're good now. Case number 23-09-17 for 1116 Etowah Avenue. I believe, yep. You're on deck. Thank you. Whenever you are ready. Uh, the subject site is located on the west side of Etowah Avenue within the one family residential zoning district and the site currently contains an existing single family dwelling with two detached accessory structures. Uh, the petitioner is proposing to demolish the existing front and closed porch of the existing house and extend their uh, fr first floor living space and with a new unenclosed front porch and steps integrated into the, the southeast corner of the dwelling and a full second story addition would also be built. Uh, the existing house already maintains a non-conforming front yard setback of 21.7 feet where a 25 foot front yard setback is required. And after the proposed first and second floor additions, the resulting front yard setback would be 16.75 feet. So they're encroaching further into the minimum required front yard setback. So the, f the first variance that the petitioner is seeking is to be able to alter slash expand a non-conforming structure and then a second variance to allow for, uh, to, to waive 8.25 feet from the minimum required 25 foot front yard setback. Uh, as I stated initially, uh, there's also going to be a new unenclosed front porch and steps uh, at the southeast corner of the front of the house. And the zoning ordinance does allow for unenclosed front porches and steps to encroach up to seven feet into the minimum required front yard setback. Uh, however, this proposal extends 9.4 feet into that front yard setback area, so the petitioner is seeking a third variance to waive 2.4 feet from the maximum allowable seven feet that an unenclosed front porch and step are allowed to encroach into the front yard setback area. Thank you. All right, is there any questions for staff? Yes, Ms. Reed. I'm sorry, I'm just confused about this okay. front porch. Um, mm -hmm. Is, because it doesn't look like it's a front porch. It looks like there's just steps going into the house now. Am I? It's in the corner right here. So it's, 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 it's open air. It's not a window, it's an open. So the house room. comes out just as far though, right? Yes, but this is the setback line back here. Oh, okay. So it's because they're expanding the first floor mm -hmm. that the porch now yes. comes out. Okay, I got it, thank you. you. That, that, oh, that was very much confusing to okay. me. I had to really look at it and then go by the house and say, yeah. so the new part of the house is gonna be just up to where the old house the old the front of the old houses. Well, actually, am I saying that right? No, not not quite. So, oh. if you look at the existing house, right? Um, they're infilling the covered porch. Right. Yes. So, where where the front yard setback goes up to on the current house is 21.7 feet. It's going to be built extending closer to the uh, closer to the uh, front lot line. So, it's actually going to be, you know, after the addition, it's going to be encroaching closer. To the street it's coming more forward correct what you're saying correct. from what existing is there yes by how much so currently it's at 21.7 feet okay. after the proposed addition it's going to be 16.75 feet okay because it doesn't look like that on the drawing it looks like exactly the same yeah and this the front of the house from the street what you see is presumably living space but technically it's required as a glass so we don't regard it as living space. Petitioners removing that glass closed front porch and constructing a living space that comes out into its same footprint area. The same foot, that's but, what I'm trying to say. And so you'll have living space that's out in front. Okay. Most people look at the front of the house now and they go, oh, that's living space. We consider it and it's assessed as a glass enclosed porch. It's not conditioned, it's not living space. Okay. I get it. No problem. Any other questions for Mr. Ray? Um, do we know how far the steps of the neighboring properties come out? 
Uh, I, we don't know exactly. Plan. However, the petitioner's architect did provide uh, the setbacks for the adjacent dwellings. Uh, that would be on page seven of your package. Oh yeah, does that include the how far the stairs steps go up? Uh, no, it go, those go to the closest point of living space. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for staff? All right, going once, twice. All right. Seeing the petitioner present, you may come forward to present your case. How are you? Uh, my name is Tim Campbell. I'm the husband of, of Sue, the actual owner of the home. Um, yeah, it was pretty confusing to me too, a little bit there. Cause, um, we're not actually trying to get at the move the building or the living space any for much further than it is now. Um, it's, just, it's basically just a, a one bedroom and we're proposing to, I mean, my wife, we can't have children, children so it's just us, so we don't need a big space, but um, we're trying to make it into a three bedroom. Um, and it's, it's about 700 square foot right now. So with that a second floor, we can, you know, put a couple, uh, three bedrooms up there and, and but downstairs obviously you, you still have to have a uh, bathroom and uh, it makes the kitchen a little bit bigger that that little bit of six foot of that um, that enclosed porch it's uh, it's the world of the space when it's just uh, six foot by you know uh, I think it's 30 feet something like that um, so we're kind of just trying to make it a little bit uh, the flow a little bit better in the first floor and put all the uh, second floor uh, bedrooms up there with a bathroom, laundry, that kind of thing, um, while staying in the same footprint of the home. Um, it, it is definitely, uh, I, I don't, I, I took measurements and I didn't re realize, well, they, I know we're not going any further. And, and just like uh, gentleman, uh, Mr. Murphy said, it's, it looks as if the house is kind of just, it, it looks like a home already, but I um, just kind of wanted to, I guess, bring that to a, to attention. Um, trying to make it, it's not a very appealing house right now, so we're trying to obviously make it fit the neighborhood and um, up the value of the home for, uh, you know, three bedroom opposed to one. So, um, I don't know, if is that pretty much it? Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you, appreciate it. Any, what, any questions for the position? We have a couple. <laughs> sure, sure. Hold on, Mr. Todd. Hi, good evening. Uh, just a few questions. Uh, number one, did you reach out to any of your neighbors to discuss what you're doing? Did you receive any feedback, any concerns, complaints? Are they in agreement? Just, just the two um, on either side the two of adjacent. us. Yeah, okay. and then they had no problem with it, um, except we have to cut the mulberry tree that's dropping uh, berries onto their driveway. So I okay. said, no problem, we'll get that taken care of. Um, but other than that, they're, they're all real, real nice people. I couldn't get a hold of the people across the street, but. Um, you know, we're, we're only there ever so often. We live a few blocks away, so we're, we're residents here uh, in Royal Oak already, but um, found a, a nice little um, area that we thought we could try to make better. Okay, uh, second question. Since you are proposing to kind of work within that existing footprint, do you, or maybe this is a question for the builder, did you look at, is there foundation under that covered porch right now? I mean, is there... Is it just simple posts at the foundation for those posts at the corner? Does it extend? Can you actually build upon that? Are you going to be tearing that out to build a new foundation to support the first and second floor addition? Are you, are you really building within that footprint? Are you constructing new to be able to support what you're doing above? I think he's going to have to have a whole new foundation there. Okay. That, that That's what I seems to have some posts on it from what we've been able to figure out. So yes, he's going to have to clear off the porch and then just build a new foundation. But it's not the intent is not to expand the footprint of the house. And last question, knowing that there are some front yard issues here, front yard setback issues, did you explore maybe building into the rear yard, like over the dining room? You know, instead of building into that, that front yard setback at the second level, did you look at offsetting that by building over the dining room? So it looks like you're not in this current plan. Mm -hmm. Like maybe rearranging your second floor plan to not push into that setback at the second floor level. We've looked at that. The big thing is he loses his bathroom on the first floor. He's really trying to get something, you know, for people that come over to the house and not have to send them upstairs to use a bathroom because it would really, that's the only place. Otherwise, he's going to have to start downsizing the pantry or downsizing some of the other living spaces. So he's giving up a lot of uh, space on the first floor if he can't, you know, capture that space where the porch is on the first floor. We have looked at stuff above the, the bedroom in the back, extending that thing out. This, um, this is version five, I think. Yeah. We've been really trying to mess around just to stay within, you know, the, the, the footprints and not have to 
chew up more of the yard and that kind of thing. Yeah, he's not trying to build a big house like on either side of him. They're not trying to get to that scale. He's trying to keep as much backyard as possible as well, too. So, I mean, I understand that. I understand the first floor bathroom need, but I was mentioning more about the second floor. Yeah. Could that be offset and build over the dining room, not expanding the footprint, to this building over the dining room? Just ask if you explored that concept. We have looked at it, yes. And it doesn't work. It is, uh, the layout was a little bit tougher, and um, there is a foundation back there for that part of it. For, yeah. You know, for that. Yeah, there is a there is a foundation for it. It, it was just a, a kind of a weird layout versus what he was able to do with where the stair location is. Because with the stair location, to get back to the bedroom, you had to kind of like you, there was less efficiency because there was more corridors and stuff to get back to that that space. So, and the only reason we thought that it might be. Uh, again, that we thought that it might be okay is that it kind of looked like the house was there already and we weren't sure if that was going to affect it a whole lot as far as like the, the, the appeal of the, of the home itself, uh, especially once we redo the front with shutters and you know some nice looking doors and that kind of thing. But. Okay, thank you. Mr. Moore. Yeah, uh, my question, that I thought I heard you mention something about a third bedroom. I'm only seeing this is going to be Two bedrooms, correct? Uh, well, I mean, we will use one as an office just because we don't have uh, kids or that kind of thing. But, um, but there's, fact is actually we turned, we we have one of them that's a walk-in closet actually on that plan. That oh, okay. Because I, I was yeah. trying to figure out where the I'm third sorry. bedroom was. I, I yeah. saw the walk-in closet and laundry, and I'm. Okay. Yeah, it, it basically we figured at one point if uh, somebody did move in after us and that kind of thing, they could close off oh, the I door um, and make it a, a whole, it's big enough to be a room. Basically, with real simple, you know, okay. drywall. Okay. My second question. So I'm back to the porch here. Uh, too much porch stuff, right? Uh, mm -hmm. The stairs are recessed under the roof line. Is that as so? There's nothing sticking out. No. Yeah, and, and it's that's where I was kind of confused too. It's um, basically you're you're kind of opening that front door and you're in the home. Um, but there will be like a, a little foyer there kind of that when you walk up the stairs and that they'd be another. So there's like a landing and then the right. door into that. There's not, it, the majority of the space is stairs. It's not a correct porch per se. I no, guess. not at all. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just trying to understand that. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, one question you had mentioned about taking down a tree. Is that the big tree in front of the house or are you going to be able to leave that? Oh, no, I'm going to leave. I'd like to leave that myself. <laughs> okay. I mean, we'll, we'll trim it up a little bit because uh, it's encroaching the neighbor. Fit. This, but yeah. it's a beautiful tree, and that's where Royal Oak, right? I mean, people chop down too many trees already. In my opinion. Any other questions for the petitioner? All right. Thank you very much. Seeing none, we'll open this up to public comment. Is there anyone here to speak on this case? Don't all rush to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, seeing none, going once, twice, three times. All right, public comment is closed. We'll move back to the side of the table. Is there any discussion and or motions? Mr. Mayor. I, I think it's appropriate to ask the petitioner oh, if they'd yes. like to proceed. Thank you, Mr. Based, based on the reduced number of that. board Got members. Two kind of, yeah, there's eight of us instead of nine. You need five affirmative votes. Do you wish to adjourn or to the next, or table to the next meeting, or do you want us to proceed and, and vote on this motion? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Murphy. Um, so is there any discussion and or motions? Mr. Clapp. Well, my only struggle here is, uh, as, I was, as I mentioned, it's really the second floor. You know, from a street level or first floor standpoint, even though it's not technically first floor space, it's enclosed and, and the optics are that it's, it's been there for a while. So from a first floor standpoint, I don't really have an issue with that. If, they, if that's a restroom, if it's a foyer area, it's there. It's not really going to impact the neighborhood in a, in a terrible way. But when you bring that second floor all the way out, it's a bit of a billboard there. And you look at it it's, as it's sandwiched in between the two homes, it will be out quite a bit. So that was my main question is, you know, why can't that second floor be pushed back a bit to the proper setback line and then build over the dining room. I think it would offset that condition where it's this big frontage, this big wall in front of the house that, that'll stick out like a sore thumb in my opinion. So I'm in support of the first floor. I'm just challenging the second floor in the fact that it's coming out so far in front of that setback line. I think there could be other creative solutions to make it compliant, at least at the second floor, while still getting the square footage you need. Because that dining room is a pretty big space to build over. 
if the master suite could be built over that. I'm not here to design this plan here on the fly, but I think there's other ways to work within the, the existing configuration while not you know, bringing that, that front face too far forward. That's, that's my take. Any other comments? Ms. Sugan. I, I have no problem with expanding the non-conforming use, but um, the fact that it's already intruding into the setback further than the houses on both sides, I agree with Mr. Klatt that it's, it's just going to be a little too intrusive. Um, and I think because of all the work that's being done, you could probably move it all back. And, you know, the size of the house is fine because you do have those larger houses by you and it fits within the ordinance. But the setbacks are what I'm having a problem with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hand. Go ahead. Um, I'm driving by the house. I had the same problem with kind of the front of the house. Um, of course, it took me a while to figure out how that front door was going to work. Okay. And then looking at the front, just like you say, kind of a billboard kind of thing. But then when I went to the house and drove up the neighborhood and I went up the driveways of the other houses and looked like down the sides, it didn't seem like it was going to be that intrusive. But that was just kind of my vision of what it was going to look like. And just on my opinion. Mr. Moore. I, I will say, you know, in the... The sketches that were provided, there are quite a few windows on that nice. front wall that I think really make a difference. It's not necessarily a solid wall. It has some appeal and interest to it. So, you know, I, I'm sure there's a lot of reasons why they've, you know, went with this design. Um, you know, foundation, you know, work that needs to be done, things like that. Um, looking at the houses that are next to it, I'm not so sure that it's going to look that out of place or anything like that, so. Mr. Clem? I mean, that is a good point. That was the only saving grace that I could see is it's sandwiched in between two newer builds that probably have 10 foot ceilings that might offset this if it was built next to an existing bungalow that would be you know a, a bigger detriment but that'd be the only saving grace here that i could see so am i hearing any motions here <laughs> i'm going to take a crack at it one way or another mr oh, hold on i'm scrolling sorry <laughs> quicker than i thought you were going to be um I will make a motion that we approve all three variance requests as presented. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Let's run. Go ahead, Mr. Moore. Sure. Um, I will say that I think, you know, they're, they're kind of in a tough spot here with the house that's there and, you know, trying to utilize the same foundation and if there are issues with building over the dining room you know I I'm not one to make that determination so I do feel that you know if there are accessibility issues on the second floor or they've, they've already um, you know thought about that and couldn't do it I, I do see that they've met the necessary criteria and I think that's true. I mean, it's already a non-conforming. These old houses, they are non-conforming. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's 100 years old, if not close to it. I have to say that I know this neighborhood quite well. I grew up in Royal Oak. I went to Franklin School. That used to be our neighborhood. Um, I think it's going to, it's nice to go down that street and look at all the newer houses and how things um, have changed through, through time. Um, I think it's going to, I think it's going to be a nice improvement. And I think that it'll fit in with everything you just said. Any comments? Mr. Reddy? Um, I'll be opposed. Um, just going along the lines of what Mr. Platt said, I think there was a reasonable alternative that would not have required these variances. So that's why I would be opposed. 
this front. And again, I understand the concerns. I understand the fact that it's sandwiched in between these two newer homes, but I think there could be a more creative solution that would still meet your goals. I'm in full favor of the first floor. I think that makes sense. To me, it's already enclosed. It still feels that same way, but I think you could still achieve the same thing by offsetting that second floor back to comply and still get 99% of what you're looking for after looking at these plans. And I do, I do question the first floor too, and I see the stairs coming up to that, that front door. You don't have the proper landing there. So I think you may be pushing into that space a bit more. The building code requires a bit of a landing in front of that door. So I would I'd definitely look into that too. Just an observation. Any other comments? Mr. Murphy? Uh, it, there's a suggest there is a motion on the table. I think it would be advisable if uh, the motion was supported by some of the defined criteria that you'll find in the report. Mr. Moore, I don't know if you want to add to this. Sure, I will, um, I will go through this. So as far as A, the chapter's restrictions unreasonably prevent the owner from using the property for a permitted purpose. Um, I mean, the, the purpose that they need it for is to expand the space. So I don't feel that it's, you know, meeting the, the, the purpose that they've set out for. Um, the variance would do substantial justice to the applicant as well as to the other property owners in the district. And a lesser relaxation than requested would not give substantial relief to the owner or the other property or be more consistent with justice to the other property owners. Um, I don't see anybody here saying that anything that's proposed there um, is unreasonable and that the plight of the landowner is due to the unique circumstances of the property. It's already from what we see, even though the porch is not technically considered living space, it's already built out to the same line that they're going to be um, building at and that the alleged hardship has not been created by any person presently having an interest in the property. Uh, as far as I can tell, you probably didn't build the home this way. I'm <laughs> sure you acquired it in this condition. So, yes. And I just want to add too to those things that this is a house that already is um, non-conforming. It's 100 years old. That right there shows that it's got functional obsolescence. It's not big enough for the way we do, the way we live today and that we're still using the same footprint that it was built mm -hmm. the way it was. Those are my reasons that go for A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hart. I just, I'm, and I'm, I'm unsure of some of the other board members' thoughts and feelings on this too, but I know in the past we have offered the applicant the ability to maybe table to reconsider the design, you know, hearing some of the feedback and comments that we've had here tonight. So I just want to throw that out there as well too, if that's an option. Mm -hmm. But I'd, there could be more comments too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I uh, just wanted to say we, uh, like as I was saying, this is like version five, and why the reason why it, it kept uh, changing. There's a couple of reasons, but one of them was um, as it's hard hard to find a, a way to get the stairs uh, to to land in the right spot to then get upstairs and where the hallway um, ends up. We we brought it across. Uh, uh, basically across the front, uh, parallel with the front of the house, uh, to where if you kind of bring it back, it chops the other two would-be rooms um, to where they're just uh, quite a bit smaller than that. So that, when I, I was kind of vague when I said layout, um, but it's just in order to get back to that, um, that, that part of the house um, where we're proposing to uh, put that second floor uh, master, uh, that's, that was the hard part. It just kind of chopped up the rest of the upstairs where the where we can get the most room bang for our buck if you will in real estate was um bringing it parallel kind of with the um uh that short hallway there um it, it just as, as you can see like where we put the walk-in closet aka future bedroom if we needed it um and then that door on the master bedroom you could put a hall right through there but then you, you can probably 
uh, visualize how slender both rooms would be to get back to that addition. Um, th that was the particular part that we kept fighting, trying to, trying to, you know, it, it's a 700 and something square foot. So there's only so many places you can actually put hallways to where it just, it just chops it up real pretty bad. I just I wanted to kind of throw that out there. But um, in, in both stores, uh, both stores, both uh, residences next door, I believe they are also pretty flat. Um, just to kind of throw that out there also. So it, what I'm hearing is that you've looked at all the things and you don't really, even with the comments, you're not thinking you need to t bring it back for another month to do rehashing, bring it to see if there's anything less. You yeah, I mean, okay. if, if, if we probably would just, uh, I'm not sure. Okay, all right, thank you. Mr. Moore. Yeah, I guess that's uh, just a quick question for Mr. Murphy. Are applicants notified by the planning division that if they get denied, they cannot bring back a very similar plan? Because I know we have a request for reconsideration tonight. So I just want to know if, if that's something they're aware of. It's not expressed in our report that's provided to the petitioner and to, to the public. Uh, so no, it, it's not expressly stated to them in writing, no. We wouldn't waste your time anyways. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what I mean? To, to just I, yeah, I just, uh, okay. Thank you. I, I have another question for Mr. Murphy. If they, if they, if they went to take this plan where, and I had my same concern, but I'm not an architect, but that I noticed that there wasn't much of a landing after you walked the steps to the front door, that you need some space to walk in building code-wise. So if you were to take that to the building department and they change that, does that make a change that affects us? <laughs> I can't visualize what you're verbally expressing. So the, the porch at the top of the steps, you go up the stairs. So I guess between the top step and the door, the space that's required by oh, the landing. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that? Are we the, calling the it porch, the right thing? I don't know the number of steps. I mean, to be honest, I'm not sure the number required per grade to get up to that. Maybe maybe they need three rises up, three risers up versus four. That information has been provided, but what has been provided is not compliant. So I don't think it'll impact what we're talking about. That's more of a front yard dimension, not it's not size or area of the porch. So it's just not going to impact what we're doing here tonight. And even if it didn't comply and it needed to be brought into compliance, this may, may be possible for them to take the door and further recess it into what's called the foyer now on the exactly. drawing. So it, it may not necessarily necessitate coming out further towards the street or towards the driveway. It could gain compliance in some other fashion. I think I saw a hand on this side. No, okay. no, I saw Ms. Hugan's hand. Okay, go. All right, I just want to throw this out there. If, if we break these up and approve allowing them to expand and propose that the setbacks meet the prior setbacks, meaning the covered porch wouldn't be included, then you could build, you could redesign however you want to fit within that. And I know you've said you've looked at that, and I'm not an architect, but I just feel like there's some way you could move it back a little. Um, is, is that something we're permitted to do? The person who made the motion is always welcome to rescind the motion and <laughs> restate the motion. Is that what you want me to do? Well, no, no, it's, it's, your, it's, your, it's your call. It's your call. Um, you can keep it the way you have it. I mean, that's the struggle. I, I'd hate to deny this because I, I understand the challenges that you have. And, and I, I guess I'm totally fine with the first floor. It makes sense to me. I, I get that. I understand it. I see the spatial constraints down there. I just, I feel there's a, a way to soften the second level. But I, you know, I don't want to deny this because I understand the challenges. So if, if we could, that's I think that's a great concern. idea. If there's a way to, to break these up in some fashion where we could approve the, the, the porch and the... Mr. Moore, in your... I wish to rescind my motion granting all three of the requested okay. variances. All right. Uh, do you want to... I think Mr. Murphy had Mr. Murphy. Uh, who seconded the no. amendment? So it would be appropriate to concur. Okay. Yeah, I agree. agree. Concur. Okay, thank you. All right. So then is there any motions on the table then 
No. Don't no, Mr. Murphy, turn turning my mic. Go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Klatt had referenced, uh, I'm going to make a general summary, and you can agree with me or disagree, that you, that you and other board members were inclined to be in favor of granting the variance request associated with the ground floor, but Correct. not the upper floor. Correct. Okay. That's, that's my take. So the variance, uh, variances requested would not need to change. The wording at the end could change. So there are variances listed, and then it says to permit construction of first and second story additions. You could strike the word second, and it would grant you would be able to grant the variances as listed, but it would only apply to permit construction of first story addition that would relate to coming out and into because there's a variance request, request related to reducing the front yard setback. It would apply to that first floor addition that's coming out. It wouldn't apply to us. It wouldn't allow them to do a second story because you struck the word second story out. Understood. I, I just have a question to that then. So if that was passed, then they were able to build the first floor the way we are seeing it now, but then they would have to go back and redesign the second floor. And as long as they kept it within that footprint, they wouldn't have to come back for a variance. As long as the second story met the minimum required front yard setback. So you'd be able to have the ground floor as you presented it, and it would step back to meet the minimum side yard setback for the upper floor. So we'd be pushing everything on the front, on the top floor, back there. Back to the feet, minimum which required, feet, which is four 25 feet. So it, I think it may be best to make sure the petitioner is uh, um, uh, right, cause understands what, is what is being proposed and seven. to ask them you know, right. if that's comfortable uh, with them. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Moore. So this, this is starting to kind of feel like designing this on the fly for them. So, um, I, again, you know, I, I think it would be best if they wanted to postpone to either bring something that was in compliance with what we're stating or less non-conforming or yeah less not less non-conforming or provide documented information of why building like over the dining room space i know you've you've stated that you, you couldn't but i mean we don't have anything in our packets that is you know stating that hardship so if if there was something you know that you couldn't build over the back for, I would think that that would be a hardship that we would want to consider. So, I'll just... If I, just to understand then, if they, if they were to postpone by saying, well, we're gonna come back with something, they don't, they're not having to go through a whole nother mm -hmm. application that would, I mean, they'd still be using this one, they wouldn't have to pay extra money to come back, is yep. that correct? They would not as long as they're requesting the same variances or lesser of a variance. Mr. Clay. If they went back to the drawing board and it necessitated a new or a larger variance, then it would necessitate a new application. But if a modified drawing was less than what you're considering, you would not need to be a new application. Okay. So, we had, I had a semi blackout plan that we came up with kind of like sitting outside while we were listening to what was going on earlier. Um, in, at first, I was like, I think, listen to you guys, and, and if it, if the first floor got um, the thumbs up, we'll say, and the second floor was no bueno, we, I was like, well, we might as well just not do anything. But it technically, what you said was our our, our plan B actually, um, if we, if we did get that variance to be able to, to have the first floor, um, and tell me maybe what you think about it. But we we're just going to have kind of a square of the second floor go out over. It just a square over the whole. Yep. Uh, it actually would take if you even leave where that little cutout is. Um, it, it would actually take over that also, and probably have a post in a corner to make the second floor just a complete square instead of following the curvature of the that back addition, I guess. So it would actually give us a little bit more square footage for the second floor, but still keep uh, the layout for the first floor. And, and then it would actually, uh, Mr. Clyde, would actually uh, maybe. Um, We'd be able to do some things where it's not a billboard. You know, it would still have that um, setback if you approved the first part so only. So, do you want to 
us to table for a month and you to maybe come up with something or do you want to just go with that's that, what uh, that uh, architect just asked me and I was like man uh, we've been at this for so long I'd rather not if we didn't have to okay because um, we, we just could set the first floor approved Mr. that would be Murphy. that'd be fine we, we could do that and have it so that the second floor setback is it looks like Mr. Murphy you can correct me if I'm wrong but if they line it with where the porch ends right now if we gave them the 21.5 foot setback that should allow them the second floor to just go straight up from that front porch if they want it to if i'm reading their drawing correctly i should say i'm having a challenging time visualizing that in my mind okay, i think i think a lot of us are and yeah. and it and it may be wise to to not only for the board but for the and the public and the petitioner while it is a delay in your time frame, it may be appropriate to postpone it so that the petitioner can bring a drawing of, so that there's absolute clarity on what's being considered versus what someone may be visualizing in their mind versus another person. And then they go to the effort of submitting for building permits and it's not what we were envisioning and you were envisioning. And uh, I, it, I think it's wise to postpone to review a set of drawings that are accurate if you want to discuss real quick you, you can discuss it i was just going to say if if it is obviously okay with you guys to just yeah. do what you said to uh, oppose well no i was going to say um give the thumbs up to the first floor that would work i believe for us and but we would still have to you know put that second floor drawing into the building department and but I think, if I'm not mistaken, the variance would make us good, but well, the does, still would have to be The variance approved. has stated if we didn't grant the variance for the second floor, it actually pushes it farther back than the current front wall be separating out your front porch. So that's why Mr. Murphy is suggesting, for clarity of your own sake, as well as our sake, even though you may not want to delay a month, it might be best to delay a month just to make sure you're feeling good, we feel good, and there's no hard feelings, and then... Sure. So, if you want to discuss real quick, you you can. And, and uh, I mean, it's you know whatever you guys feel comfortable with. If if it's if it makes you. We're feel fine. Comfortable. We've had a person come before us three months now in a row, so we're fine if you want to come back <laughs> next month. Yeah, yeah. It's not gonna. We were hurt trying to feeling. break ground um, before the winter. No, but I, 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 I understand. Anthem, but, you know. I understand. Um, but so, yeah. uh, let me be clear. I'm like, you're asking. You're asking for a vote on just the first floor, and then you'll make the second floor Set comply. Back. However, you right. have to do that. Correct. It was but, somebody else's idea up here, but yeah. Well, that's why I'm saying I, myself as an architect, realizing that you're really wanting to use that first floor wall that's right now where your living room and bedroom line. That's where you actually want the setback line to be able to use that same wall. Right, which is 21.7 feet instead of 25. Feet. Correct, because otherwise you'd lose an extra four feet on the second floor, and that upper floor would not line with the first floor, and that's why I'm saying, for clarity's sake, I can see what needs to occur, but you're, you're not seeing it, and that's why Mr. Murphy's suggesting mm -hmm. that delay, just to make sure you guys are comfortable and not... I, not I think I am. I mean, it, okay. it, like, if the first floor um, porch was allowed to be living space, but then the second floor was, we couldn't have the variance on the second floor basically. So it would have to go back and start where the roof line of the living space is now, which I think that is in compliance. If I'm nope. not, oh, by a foot and a half, actually, it's not, right? It, more than that. Okay. It's so like uh, three feet. Yeah. Three, okay. Three so feet. I mean, even the, that part of it, if, if it, if you say chop the roof off of what it's not compliant and started it, that far back to be in complete compliance on the second floor and just kind of shifted the, the whole up second floor back. It, we'd have the living space on the first floor. It would shift the whole second floor into the back, be offset, and we're not a billboard. And then that would oh. work for us, I guess. But. Okay. Well, real quick, I would like you to talk with your architect. <laughs> yeah. 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 We had actually talked about this as a plan okay. B already. Because uh, me, I'm seeing that the variance needed uh, is an extra three and a half feet versus that front wall right there. So, yes. Who's going to push this? 
six foot the whole front this whole thing. No, no, no. This this front wall right here. Yeah. This if you look at on here is the light gray shade. Okay. That light gray shade right. comes to this corner here as twenty one point seven feet. From the street. Street. So they would need to go an extra four feet back oh, on the second floor, floor, which would take out this yeah. stair. So that's why I said so and I understand Mr. Murphy saying it's yeah. Best if they really came it's back. It's going to change the whole front. Right, right. And then also, can you can't leave it. You can't, I mean, how they, can you build livable space I, I don't, over this? I, th that's what the, I don't know. I mean, I know that yeah. our, legal, like yeah. space wise you can, but can you build like that? Can you have that much living space? Mr. With, Clatt has a question. Mr. Clatt. No, oh. Mr. Mr. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, think Mr. Moore, Mr. Moore had a great point. Maybe it doesn't work, right? But I think if you could prove to us that it doesn't work because of these extra hallways or something like that, then if you can prove it to us it doesn't work, you can show us that there's hardship by what we're trying to envision here, that might be the best for you. So it might delay you a month, but I think he might help you get to what you're ultimately trying to get anyways. Some good ideas realistically, so we might... Maybe we'll just throw something together so we can show you a little bit different and maybe okay. it can check all the boxes. Yeah. All right, then if you're fine with us, you're fine with us delaying the month. Okay. Is there a motion to uh, postpone or table it till next month, Mr. Miller? I will um, make a motion to postpone this to next month. All right, Mr. Clayton. I'll second. All right. Any discussion? No? All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries. Appreciate your time. Thank you. We'll Thank see you. you next month, and I'm sure it'll be a great design. All right. Yeah. Other business. Reconsideration request case number 23-08-16. Is that you, Mr. Murphy? Or That's is that... me. Okay. Yep. Yes, so as you may recall from last month's meeting, there was a case concerning 304 Lexington Boulevard uh, in regards to a proposed new house, which failed to obtain the minimum number of affirmative votes in order to be approved. And the petitioner has applied for the item to be reconsidered by the board and has supplied the attached letter to your packets for you all to review. Um, the petitioner is present tonight, so should the board choose to engage with the conversation with him, he is available. Um, so Joseph and I are here for any additional questions, but um, I would turn it back over to the board to discuss. Thank you. Mr. Moore. So this request is a request for reconsideration at a future meeting, not tonight, correct? That allows them to bring back something that yeah. could be modified from what they had originally brought to us? So to, for your first question, if the board decides to um, grant their request, they would have to submit an entirely new application, um, which would be heard by you at a later meeting date. So no, no decision would be made tonight. Uh, in regards to your second question, you would be reconsidering the initial, the initial items that were on the table. Now they can come forward and address some of those comments um, that you had made at the last month's meeting and decrease the size of the variances. But if they were substantial um, or they were greater than what was uh, presented last month, then, then that would necessitate an entirely new one. So, so it would be substantially less, like going from a four car garage to a three car garage or something like that would be fine. You're just, you're saying not over what they were asking. Yes. Before. Okay, great, thank you. All right, any other questions? That's Mr. Ray. Um, is there established criteria for us um, to use when deciding this, like we have for variances? Nothing specifically, but the, the, the burden of proof kind of relies on the uh, petitioner to prove that there was um, material that was lacking from the presentation last time. Um, which allowed, which did not allow the board to make a, you know, fully educated uh, decision. Mm -hmm. Does it only have to be missing material, or can it be um, missing information that the petitioner had, as in like not bringing the plan forward for another year? I mean, if they bring something back and it's the same material, they could be allowed to do that, right? That's the 
the board does have discretion in determining what you feel is appropriate was in essence criteria to for you to make that judgment determination on whether to reconsider the item or not <clears throat> as mr bohorsky had stated uh, it's really intended for reconsideration that there was something that wasn't presented to you from the petitioner that gave you the greatest insight to making your decision. So that's the real criteria that you should consider. There are some other factors that come into play. Again, you have latitude. Uh, the, pe the petitioner has provided you with a written statement that indicates that they were uh, not informed that if they were denied or if they did not receive the the correct number of affirmative votes that they wouldn't be capable of coming back to you with the same variance request until at least one year. So they they're they're kind of uh, uh, presenting that as their basis for their request for reconsideration. So you can accept that as uh, into factoring into your determination, but the real essence of a reconsideration is was there something lacking that they were they didn't inform you that they did not inform you of in their initial request that that could have influenced your decision differently. Uh, it's, it's not that it shouldn't be considered that there wasn't a full board. Uh, that's, and, and that's not part of, we'll say, the petitioner's argument or written statement, but because we present to individuals the, the option of postponing items if there isn't a full board. Um, but like that would not be the best judgment uh, call uh, the, the best criteria for determining whether to grant a reconsideration or not. So I, I, I think one of the paragraphs in the letter here that the board had asked if I had performed any research or presented any historical data that would align with our request. We have information and historical data that we wish to present to the board that should align with the objectives. So because they want to present that information and we didn't have it the first time, that could be it's possible. Used to determine. Okay. It's possible. Thanks. Um, Mr. Murphy, on a different note, just I know it's a gray area, but what is determined to be substantial difference in order for a new hearing to be held without waiting the year? We wouldn't consider a revised drawing that is that necessitates the same variance request, just a reduced amount or percentage. Uh, so for instance, a revised drawing that reduces the square footage or lot coverage percentage being requested, staff would not consider that to be substantially different. Substantially different would be a different design that perhaps necessitated different variances, but not a reduced variance because as you very well point out, uh, just like you did with the last uh, petitioner, that the board has the ability to grant less of a variance than it's being requested, but you can't, can't grant more of a variance or a different variance. And that was, if I recall correctly, that was part of a conversation that, was, that occurred last month with this petitioner who's asking for the reconsideration. There was conversation of reducing the variances um, Per, I believe it was square footage of the house and the percentage of the garage and square footage of the garage as well. That conversation did occur uh, and the petitioner chose not to request less of a variance and the board uh, concurrently didn't choose to make a motion with less of a square footage or less of a percentage included in their, uh, included in your motion. So no, we, we don't consider substantially different if it's just a reduction. Uh, in a revised floor plan or elevations. It would be necessitating different variance requests. All right, and it, would it be out of character to ask if the petitioner to see what data they would want to present or would that be best if that was decided only if wanted to reconsider? Uh, I think it's wise to have a conversation for you to, to have a conversation with the petitioner. Uh, the, the, he's here tonight, and uh, it certainly isn't the tonight's point isn't for him to present all that to you. It's it's to inform you that he believes there's something, whatever it is, that could influ could have influenced your decision making differently. And uh, if you grant him the ability to come back, he then can present all of that at the 
next right. meeting that he's on. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions for Steph? All right, the, the petitioner, if you'd like to come up real quick and just give, as you heard Mr. Murphy explain some of the things of what you could talk about or, or whatnot, what, what is the reason why you think we need to reconsider your, your hearing? Uh, yes, good evening. Thanks for your time again. Um, when I was here initially, uh, you know, first and foremost, I think the most important thing here is that uh, there was not a complete understanding made aware to me that if I elected to have a vote that night, that I would complete, completely locked out for a year. Not only locked out from what I presented to the board that night, but also anything that was substantially reduced, anything that's less conforming, I'm also locked out of that as well. So, uh, you know, I quickly drafted a, uh, a revised plan. I sent it over to Mr. Bohorsky, and even the reduced uh, garage, the reduced square feet, he says you're still locked out. The only way to be reconsidered is, is to come back tonight and ask for reconsideration because based on my first and foremost, I was not informed that it would be that lengthy of a time that I would be able to come back to the board and ask uh, to have some kind of variances requested. Uh, you know, we, we've taken the time to adjust those. I've absorbed all the information that I've got during the meeting. Um, you know, I let that soak in. And, and I think that we have a very good plan that would be substantially less conforming, uh, would be a great uh, new addition to the neighborhood. Uh, again, I have talked to the neighbors. Um, you know, I'm going to make sure that if we do get a reconsideration to be accepted tonight, which I hope uh, that they would come and show uh, the support of you know that they've been getting over the last couple of weeks in talking with them. Well, you mentioned something about historic data. What? what are so, you... from my understanding tonight, I was not allowed to present anything tonight. Only thing that I was. Right is be able to reconsider. Okay. I'm not allowed to bring any data. I'm no, not I understand that. I'm not present. asking you to bring the data. I'm just, you didn't mention so, the historical data yeah, so in your talk. If the reconsideration does go through, which I hope, I will present, obviously, a structure that's more or less conforming than we originally had. I'll bring supporting documentation because I was asked, I think, by Deborah last time if I did any research, and uh, I did not have that documentation with me. So, um, All right. So what did the research uh, is, and um, and I do have supporting documentation. All right, thank you. No, I'm good. Never okay. Mind. Thank you. Um, I mean, I just need a point of clarification from Mr. Murphy. If if he what he's saying, and I think what you said is, if he substantially reduces it, he still has to wait a year to come back to us. Yes, we, we, we would hold that a reduction is not a substantial change. And so the petitioner has, has just stated that he has revised drawings that he would like to present to you if you grant him the ability to have a reconsideration. We'll certainly notice it as the original variance request, but he can certainly give you that revised set of drawings, and again, you can grant less of a variance if you want the same uh, the variance that's requested or less of a variance I'm gonna um, make a motion to grant the reconsideration I'll share more if there's a second mr. Clint I'll support All right. mr. Moore okay um, you know as I mentioned earlier this evening in a prior case I, I don't think that everybody is always aware of you know the fact that they can't come back for a year uh, and you know we did offer the opportunity to postpone and I'm going to guess based on this letter that the petitioner would have made a different decision had he known that he couldn't come back for a year um, you know based on some of the feedback and I am interested to see um, the information that we had asked for last time about you know similar properties in the neighborhood and, and how those compare. So I think that's relevant um, and I'm interested to see what he comes back with. Okay. You summarized that well. I think in the heat of the moment when you're in front of the board, it's easy to understand the confusion surrounding that one year. 
and it looks like you've uh, listened to the board, listened to the comments, and have some some good ideas to to uh, maybe reduce some of that the setbacks you request or the uh, variances requested. So that's why I'm in support. Yeah, I'm going to support uh, this motion for uh, reconsideration. When we first met last month, Mr. Campbell, I agree there was not um, perhaps m being misinformed, but neither was there a full presentation nor was there an opportunity for a full discussion. I agree with you on that, and I also look forward to uh, your presentation the next time it comes around. So for that reason, I support this letter as well. Mr. Ray? Um, I'm also going to be in support, um, but I am a little worried about setting the precedent that if people deny the op opportunity to postpone and then lose, they can come back and get a second crack. So. I think maybe we can be more explicit about the one year when we give them the opportunity going forward and uh, consider that if we get um, requests like this in the future. That's all. I, I would also, with your comment, I, I would agree with that. That this is, a, and to me anyway, in my opinion, that this is a scenario where our petitioners need to be better informed uh, from our side to them about what their options are after they present. Yes. <coughs> Any other comments? Can I take it you want to No, I don't. Okay. No, 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 okay. okay. I'm, I'm in agreement. Um, I'm torn on this one. I understand his position of not being informed. Um, I don't like setting precedents. Usually we've always gone in this case of unless there's new data to present I mean, if you look at the votes, they were three and four, four and three. Nothing was substantial enough to push it over to get by. Um, maybe a revised thing will get it. Maybe it won't. I don't know. It's just the thing I'm torn on setting the precedent of, hey, other people will see with this and be like, hey, you know what? I, I, you, you didn't really s spell out. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think of it at the time, and now I did think about it afterwards. Can you read? I, I hate that type of thing, and I and I feel for you, too, because of how you were. I saw the meeting, and I saw how it went. So I'm really torn on this one. Um, I, I'll decide when it comes up to what I'm going to do, but I'm really torn because I just know how some people in the past have tried to play asking for precedence, not saying you're any of those people but how we've had other people in the past try and play that game. Um, I, yeah, I, I have the same, I'm torn also, because you know, I'd, I'd love to hear what you want to present, but I'm afraid of the precedent we would be setting by allowing this to go, to be reconsidered. I just had a question for Mr. Murphy too. How, I don't know, maybe the last, three years that I recall, how many times has, have we ever done this before? It's very rare. Uh, I want to say, I mean, in, my in the last tenure, three years, maybe. I don't know, let me just start I here, however, how many? I can't think of a request in the last three, Yeah. Uh, but I can certainly think of ones from the past, but it's very rare. Yeah, very rare. it's very rare. Mr. Moore. Is there something we can do in the future, um, you know, maybe something in the wording that we read at the beginning that, you know, states that if a petitioner is denied, they have to wait for a year so that they're aware of that and they hear some of our feedback and if they're, you know, offered the opportunity to postpone, they can make a more educated decision without necessarily, you know, setting precedence Absolutely. That's a, that's so, a very astute think, comment. Yeah. We, we can do that in what I guess we'll call the preamble. We can yeah, change something that. like that. And then that we'll also be... include that in the at the bottom of every report after we list the criteria. We can include that as well. And that and that um, statement that within a year, that's per year bylaws. So we'll reference it in that fashion too. Okay. Yes, we can certainly accomplish that. What about so, just putting this on the application? In the, in the packet that Mr. Murphy would hand out. Mm -hmm. I believe that's what you're referring to, right? We'll cover it. Yeah. Mr. Moore. So I, I will make one final comment. I understand the comments up here about setting precedents, but 
I feel that if he knew he couldn't come back for over a year and that he wanted to present this information that you know we didn't have the the first time that he would have genuinely made a different decision based on what he's stating here yeah I, w I would only on that note the idea that um, that we're setting a precedent about denials and retries <clears throat> For people that aren't fully informed of their decisions or options in the first place. So, uh, again, I will support this motion to reconsider. Thanks, Karen. I wasn't here last meeting, but I, I do agree that I think if we add some of this language to the packets and stuff like that, it seems like that would uh, help the situation. So, all right. Any other comments? If not, we'll move to a vote. Please raise your hand and signify by saying aye if you're in favor. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, it passes six to two, so this will come back in a future agenda to be reconsidered. All right, thank you, everybody. You're welcome. All right, uh, any other, other business? Mr. Murphy, do we have to do any kind of motion to add something to the preamble? No. Uh, no? Okay. No. All right. I'll let you guys take care of that. Thank you. All right. If there's no other business, general public comment then. Uh, feel free to come on up. Speak your mind. Thank you very much. Janice Wagman. Um, I came two meetings ago when the Sylvan was originally presented and I voiced my concern about trying to silence people who were showing up to speak about what basically is their biggest investment, their homes and their neighborhoods. And I was um, saddened to see that they were being silenced and being told that only new people could come up and Mr. Offick um, apologized and, and changed that. But then last month, the same thing happened, except this time nobody was allowed to speak because they shut it down. They allowed the presenter to present and then a room full of people were told they couldn't speak unless they wanted to stick around till afterwards. It takes a lot to get people out to talk in the first place and they're angry and why you would want to shut them down, I don't know. Then tonight it was the same thing. Elect somebody to talk. If we got something new, we'll hear from you, but there's new people here. And I, you know, I really don't think that's your job. I think your job is to review the information, but also to hear from the public, even if they're repeating themselves. They're, they're taxpayers, they're, they're residents, they're homeowners. They should be given that opportunity to speak. One way you could stop that is, from what I understand, is there used to be alternates. So you wouldn't have this coming back constantly where she was allowed to do that. Um, because how, when was the last time you had a full board? I know the last three meetings you haven't. So if there's any way you can um, advocate with the city commission to establish two alternates so we don't have to deal with this all the time, that would be awesome. But my feeling is you had the right to do it, but it wasn't the right thing to do. You should have allowed people to speak. Um, and you do have that latitude, I'm sure. You've shown a lot of latitude tonight. And I understand that you don't want to be here all night listening to the same pe or to different people saying the same thing over and over again, but Mr. Murphy can tell you we were here till 1.30 last night for the planning commission meeting. So once a month, if you have to stick around and listen to people, then please, just do it. Um, and lastly, one thing I do know is that as members of this um, uh, board commission, you are required to fill out an ethics form, and only five of you have done so. So I would appreciate you filing those and putting them in with the city because you are in violation of the uh, ordinance. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else here to speak? Go on once, twice. Okay, the general public is closed. Mr. Moore? I just have a question uh, before we adjourn. Um, the idea of alternates has been brought up on a number of different occasions recently and my understanding of 
alternates and I just want Mr. Murphy to verify this um, as I understand it. Uh, having alternates would mean that we would have a seven person board. So in cases that needed a six, six votes in affirmative, you would, the ratio would be reduced. You would need six of seven instead of six of nine. So it may not always be in a petitioner's best interest to have a seven person board instead of a nine person it, board it, without alternates. Is that correct? It changes the st statistical odds. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Who wants to do the mystery motion? Anyone? Mr. Reddy. I move that we adjourn. Is there a second? Ms. Zukin. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we're done. Thanks.